Good morning, folks. It's me again, Drew. That's really loud. Hey, welcome back to another video. I hey, hope you all enjoy. I'm feeding the goos. Hey, let me all know what you think of my new camera. If it's any good, please tell me. Hey, just let me know if the sound's all right. Let's see if it's any better. It's no way. Hey, let's see what footage we can get with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's get some silage cut out. So I always take the top thin layer away just to make sure that the main milking herd gets the best of the silage. Top block's not bad, but uh, it's just to make sure that there's no bad stuff in it whatsoever. Silage is looking lovely. So that is all the silage cut out, that is two strips of silage, that's all we seem to need at the moment. So basically I'm going to talk you through what we put in the wagon and where it's from, byproduct wise, etc, you know. As I'm filling the wagon up. So. Get my bucket on here, and that pit there we're using third cut silage. Uh, second cut wasn't producing the amount of milk that we would like, so we are currently going to be using it for young stock when they come in. So uh, save the good stuff for the dairy goods. Okay, first shed, drive in here, get my scoop, this is dark grains mixed with uh, sugar beet, oh, yeah. <coughs> this is dark grains mixed with sugar beet pulp, so dark grains is distillers grains from distillers, <laughs> and uh, it's a byproduct from alcohol production, and sugar beet pulp's the byproduct of what you get from the sugar separation process. So, there are two prime products that we've mixed together and put in that shed. And then we come back here and put it in our wagon, mix it up to feed to the queues. <laughs> right, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm mixing up a blend for the whole herd, feeding out half of it and then topping it up with silage. Just makes things a little bit easier, I'm not having to drive around the yard twice. Okay, that's the first one done. On to the next one, obviously. <laughs> next door there, that's our uh, fines from when uh, wood pellets, I'm pretty sure. When you make wood pellets, they call them fines uh, that comes out as that byproduct, and that's what we are bedding the cows with at the moment in the, the cubicle sheds in there into the crimp barley shed as you can see there's quite a lot of barley at the moment that's when it's running out the shed but we've got it all happed so barley
Harley isn't a byproduct, it is homegrown. So, homegrown is very handy for us, especially the prices have went this year. And uh, it's very good for the queues. straw that comes off it's perfect for growing the dung to then grow the same crop again next year and believe me we're going to need all the dung we can get with the prices of fertiliser holy buggery Just full bucket. <laughs> so that's to feed all the cows. Well, like that's one load. It's not very often that that would come up with the right amount I wanted. Usually, I'd have to go back for a wee skiff or put some back. <laughs> right, so I drive around the yard. I believe some of you have watched my previous videos and I've seen what it is but hey we'll just go around to it and just explain what it is again <laughs> so this next one is a byproduct from Kellogg's at the moment it is a maize so yeah byproduct of cereal production <laughs> so yeah, everything's far barley and silage so far has been in the wagon from human consumption. Here we are, in the old cart shed. This was be where all the, the carts used to be stored for the old Clydesdales that used to work the farm years ago. Right next door to it, down there. It's known as the stables. I never saw any horses there, but my grandfather did. So, so yeah, so I put some of this in the wagon. And then come back. Feathers in the way. And then I'll drop this off. He's reversing for me. Drop this off then go around to get my uh, minerals and some of the some more concentrates. Okay, now I've got the minerals, I'm going to go put them in the wagon before coming back to put, <coughs> to put the molasses and the soy meal in the wagon, so I'll go do that now. So molasses on the left there is a byproduct of sugar production uh, and soy meal is a byproduct of the soybean getting crushed for the only 30% that's usable for human consumption. So all that byproduct is waste because it's worth less than the bit for human consumption. So that is why it's the byproduct and that is why we are feeding it to the cows. So I'll go and uh, fill this up.
right there's your sawyer and there's your treacle it's all in the bottom I'll pour it in the wagon and then I get a wee bit of silage and that cleans the bucket right out and then I'll get the wagon mixing feed half of it out top it off the silage and then get feeding <laughs> save driving around the yard twice as I said before Third cut is looking really, really good outer pit. <coughs> really nice smell to it. Uh, you might be thinking you're seeing a bit of steam, but it's just that cold this morning. It's quite a bit of frost about. So, right, that's the first load ready to go. Saves a bit of time doing what I just done. So, that might look a bit strong, but you've got to remember. There's quite a bit of silage to go on top of it. So not sure what you can see. The sun is at an awkward height, just covering everything. But uh, that should be a lot less concentrated looking and a lot more silagey looking. So I will get this first load fed. Sun's at a really bad height. It's just getting to that time of year. I thought I'd better make this video before winter gets into full swing because then you'll not be able to see anything because it just gets that dark. So I'll just do this the new slightly later just so that you get a better view of the lock cutter working. But all in all, this morning's going pretty good. Yesterday morning, not so good. I was cutting with a block cutter and the oil pipe burst uh, when I was opening it. So, full way down, oil was pushing everywhere. <laughs> Not ideal, but sorted that out and then got going again. But just one of the hot ups you just didn't need. <laughs> so, coming round now into the trough passage. So I feed, feed all of this and then the next load I feed some of it down the shed there and then I come down and feed the rest of the trough with the rest of that. That's what we do. Open the side door, let it shoot down. And then get the conveyor going. drop left there so we'll just switch that off shut the door lift the chute so handbrake <laughs> yeah PTO looks like a handbrake so there's a lot of folks saying that I should get a new feed wagon uh, on one of my last videos I think it was 
Uh, we can't really upgrade, we've got to keep this one going. This shed is a problem. Uh, the other dudes just fits in and no more, but... is the struggle. The wagon's just a little bit too tight for this shed. Um, you've got to hang over here, you've got to be at this trough, otherwise you start trying to take out the shed by hitting the beams, so... It was a... they lean to off the old silage pit in there, that's now our parlour and back of parlour for the milking herd, when they're getting milked obviously, <laughs> but can't really upgrade um, unless we can find a wagon the same height and uh, there's another thing, there's no very many uh, feed wagons that can be good. There's no many feed wagons that can get driven off a 65 horsepower tractor. Um, as soon as you upgrade onto a top you've got to increase the horsepower Whereas this thing just works away. Aye, she has her moments. But in general, she's a very, very good wee tractor. She's not done a lot. Uh, when we got this tractor, some guy was just using it to top their paddock. I think I was in, I think I was just in high school, so I would have been about 14 at the time, I think. And uh, so he was using it to top his paddocks. But the guy before that, it was actually at Kubota, so the Kubota factory had it to take apart, to look at, to see how Dukes made the tractors. Pretty sure that was the story. So I had done nothing. Uh, and then this guy got on it to top his paddocks and then he sold it to his Aggie. Maybe got something bigger, I'm not sure. But now we've got this tractor, it's not done an awful lot. So just to scoop this lovely pile up, put it in the wagon. Don't worry, where I dumped it was clean. That part of the pit's clean, because that's where I'm doing this every day. This part's just getting slitter from where I'm filling it. Even at that, that's just needing a wee scrape. And it'll be fine. So, I'll fill it up, feed the next load. Um, I'll not record filling it, because the sun will be facing us this time, so... I'll, eh... Uh, eh, I'll just show me feeding it this time. <laughs> Oh yeah, this wee feed wagon tractor and wee feed wagon. That saves a lot of diesel because it's only 65 horse. You know, you're not burning through much in a week. You know, you're lucky if you fill it up every week and a half, you know. And even then it's a very, very small diesel tank. <laughs> right, let's have a look at the blend. Nearly fully mixed, so I'll just uh, get out of here for a few minutes and then I'll reverse it to my first shade. part of the old shed that they are able to get to. There are the dry cows, there's a gate there, so that's for their half the cubicles. 
The reason I was reversing so carefully in is because we've been working on these and some of our stuff is still lying on the ground here because we've still got another two or three feed barriers to change, maybe more than that. But, eh. Uh, aye. We'll get there. They're slightly bigger, which is causing problems, so we're having to cut them and re weld them to make them fit. It's, eh. Uh, aye. That's, eh. Uh, they're, they're, they're the. We, we bought gates years ago and uh, Dad found them and went, well, they're still pretty 100%, you know, because they're galvy. So we're putting them on. They're, they were just the right size to start with, but now they're too big. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, don't ask me, because I don't know. It's just working in that way. Strange. That sun is at a bugger of a height, but I'm no complaining because it's been a while. <laughs> so I wasn't quite finished feeding this frog, so I'll put a wee bit in here and then straight down that lean two passage that I went down before. Give a wee bit to the straw lot. Then let all the coos in for their munchies. <laughs> Here they come. That sun's just reflecting off the flare straight into my eyes. <laughs> Not that for a while. We have I'm always to kind of do this after on this passage. Get all the silage back in. Valuable stuff, you know. You'll be able to see some of our cattle still out down there. Grass is getting a bit further down, so that's why we're starting to sort the <coughs> sort the feed barriers so that we can get them in, and uh, we can spread slurry down here. We were going to put them across the road, but a uh, mongol sheep have fair munched it away, so there is a uh, there's no point now. So let's get these hungry girls in. Watch the rampage. Because I feed the other shed last, they don't come out at just racing. Because they're all at the other feed passage. Right, that's a new water truck. Dad replaced it uh, this week. Because, uh, Dad replaced it this week because there was, a, there was a massive hole in the bottom of it. I just got to that age where it decided I'm not going to hold any more water.
<laughs> Some of them go running in there. They prefer being inside. Most of them like being out here in the fresh air. Big open shed. And they love standing out here. It's nice and cool, plenty of air. It's kind of like the re. It's kind of like the re lounging area. Between just there and up here. By the time I open this gate and pin it, once they're all settled, we generally find the ones that are bullying in this passage. So the last thing to do is pin them in. Sun. Anyway, hope you've all enjoyed this video on feeding the cows. Maybe you've learnt a couple of things about the, the byproducts that we use feeding cows. This is generally what the other dairy farmers are using too. So, um, hey, reusing, recycling. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. I am Drew, and this is our farm. <laughs>